welcome to Friday. It is Friday in North Georgia. Welcome to North Georgia Now Today. Today is going to be an interesting day. My day started at 2.29 when that alarm that you want to hear in case of an emergency made my cell phone go off. So my cell phone goes off and it says, warning, there have been uh, bad weather sighted in your area, yada, yada, yada. You listen to the message and then you lay there and you wait and you wait and you wait on the bad weather. We didn't get the bad weather. We got a little bit of rain, but it woke me up and it kept me awake the rest of the night. So I kind of laid there and listened and waited and listened and I hope you did not have bad weather. The warning said we were gonna have bad weather. No, we didn't in Pickens County or in my side of Pickens County, we didn't. So I hope you made it through a safe, safe night. But the cool thing is the alarm systems work because it went off as scheduled. Anytime there is major weather, my alarm, my phone is set to go off with this warning and it's just a recorded message that tells you. And I told y'all a little, a uh, few months ago how to sign up for this and I actually can't remember how I did it, but you can call 911 and they can guide you through this. It's through Pickens County and it's a great service to the community. Now quite often when that alarm goes off, the hospitals are also alarmed to bring in extra staff and keep doctors over who might be clocking out or going home to wait and see if there's going to be any bad weather. Last night, I don't think we had any bad weather. We didn't at my house, so I hope you didn't. We have uh, an empty chair today. The empty chair is because Angela and I both had a little bit of the same issue, except I made it through it a little bit better than she did. She's on her way. Something just didn't set right, and that's all I'm going to tell y'all. But I'm feeling much better now, and she's beginning to feel a little better now, and she'll be here shortly. And then we will have, this is the end of February. It has been Heart Month. We have talked Heart Healthy. We talked Heart Loving. And I got to tell y'all something. You know, I, Hannah, I don't know about this or not, but sometimes I can't remember certain things. And today, in about two seconds, I forgot a word. So I need y'all get online and see if you can find one of those courses you take for memory retention. Because I heard a song on the way up here, and I said, I've got to remember this to tell the audience to listen to these two songs. Because if you've had a good heart month and you're in love or you care about somebody or you might have your eye on somebody, da 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 da, you know, sometimes guys are a little bit bashful. And as we went through the Valentine month, some guys bought women big, beautiful, like Richard Burton. You know, he always bought Elizabeth Taylor Diamond about this big. And some guys buy big boxes of candy. And some guys do nice little things. And some guys, might even clean house, which is really a nice thing. I think that's what Bill Senior did. So through Heart Month, we have seen people doing exceptional things, doing very, very sweet things, doing um, funny things, just all kinds of things to warm your heart. And as Heart Month ends, we're gonna encourage you guys. Now the guys, this is just for you continue to do those little things. If it means picking up your laundry and putting it in the laundry basket, imagine that, a guy doing that. Or if it means washing her car, just a little something, doesn't cost you anything. In today's world, we say budget, 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 and budgeting means you can wash her car at home in the driveway and get it done and save yourself nine dollars or whatever but but you know do little things <clears throat> just do little tiny things maybe call a neighbor and take them out to lunch um, maybe make an extra bowl of banana pudding and deliver it to a neighbor do a little something for somebody else and it will make your heart feel better now the two songs that i heard this morning and this is funny because i wrote it down immediately after hearing it and i wrote it down wrong one of them is called tell her by Lone Star. <laughs> well, I wrote down, tell her by lonesome. It's not lonesome. And if you don't tell her, you might be lonesome for long. So there you go. That was, it was weird because I heard the song and I thought, I've never heard this song before, but it was a cool song. And then I heard another song. <clears throat> now, either you really, really like Tanya Tucker or you really, really don't. And um, I'm going to ask you about a song that she did. And it talked about a young girl back years ago and it was one of her very, very first and the girl had a name and it was the same name as one of my children. So if you can call me and tell me what is the name of the song, I think it was her most 
possibly not highest on the charts, but possibly most recognizable song. Call me at 866-939-2329. And guess what you're going to win? You're going to get a whole trio of Bill Sinyard and First Mountain City. Now, that's a pretty nice gift. There you go. If you can call and tell me, what did Tanya Tucker do that was a, a song that it was a little bit, um, yeah, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it was the song when you heard it, you knew her amazing voice. Now, she has this other song that I heard this morning, never heard it before in my life. Now, I listen to Roadhouse Radio all the time. Never heard this song. It's called Soon by Tanya Tucker. So, guys, listen to this song. And, you know, um, as we end Valentine Month, Heart Health Month, don't forget to keep your heart healthy. And keeping your heart healthy, this is what my cup says, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Okay, keep your heart happy, keep your heart at peace, and you will have a healthy body. It is easy to let the things of the world get you down. You cannot do that. You absolutely cannot do that because it will take you... It will take you down to places you may not recover from. So don't let that happen. And I have to say, yesterday I got the sweetest phone call from Bill Pittman's mom. And she said, next time I won't just get a rose, I'll get a lot of flowers. That They were very thankful for me having him back on the show. And we have a winner, Sarah Henson from Ella J. Knew that Delta Dawn is the song. And I do have a Dawn, and her name is Cherokee Dawn because she was born at 613 in the morning and she has Indian heritage. And it's funny, I said if she'd have been born at night, the kid would have hated me because her name would have been Shawnee Dusk and she would have been one mad kid the rest of her life. So, But Delta Dawn is a song that uh, made Tanya Tucker very, very popular when she was a young kid. This week, we have featured children. We've talked about children. We've encouraged you to call us about your children. We featured a young lady on Wednesday that will win American Idol someday. This kid is amazing. Last night when we watched as they did the elimination on um, American Idol, it was sad because there were some kids that were really, really good and it was like this was their one shot at the big time and they didn't make it. One girl had been there seven times. It was her birthday and she got kicked off and you're like, you gotta be kidding me. But don't let things get you down. Keep your heart happy. And um, it's funny because I was thinking today about people who love me. Joyce Bryson loves me and I know that because she calls me and she does little things for me. She doesn't spend any money on me and she doesn't send me big gifts and yada yada yada, but she loves me. And uh, Bob and Evelyn Blackstone do little things for me all the time and I know they love me. And I said it is funny because when I look at the list of people who love me, I've got a whole lot of people who love me who do little things for me that mean so, so much to me. And I have a list of woodges and, and I have that list of would you do it again? Absolutely not. And then I have a list of I'm so glad I did these things. And one of the things I'm glad I had the opportunity to do was to go out in this community. Every time I go out in this community, I am blown away by your kindness, by your wonderful giving spirit. Um, I want to say thank you so much to everybody who came on Wednesday morning when we had Brother Matt preach on top of the mountain. Now, I'm going to admit this. I was there for the filming and I watched it two times. Yesterday, we had people who watched it two times. We had people who watched it three times. Matt touched a lot of people when we did this. It was a great way for you to get to meet him. It was a great way for us to give back to you. And I have this idea, and if Matt will go along with it, about once a quarter, I want to go back to that beautiful mountain and I want to film him delivering another message, and we want to invite y'all to come back with us. The only problem being, we will not do it in the dead of summer because Matt and I agree on two things. We don't like sweat. We just don't like sweat. So we will do it spring quarter and then in the fall and then possibly as we approach winter before it gets too terribly cold, a Christmas message. The message was powerful. The place we were in was amazing, and today we're going to share a little bit more of that amazing place with you. Fields of the Woods started in the early 1900s with people who actually went in on horseback and found this gorgeous location and had a vision to open a huge church, camp, refuge, whatever. And it has hosted thousands and thousands of Christians. 
this Easter, it will host many, many Christians who will come there and spend their day, possibly their weekend. Some people will stay a whole week. It is an amazing facility just inside North Carolina. And um, if you haven't been there, I hope that we will entice you to take a trip there. Just take a picnic lunch. So today we're going to show some of the footage. And one of the ladies we're going to be interviewing, her family was very instrumental in the early days of this facility that is just incredible. Now, it belongs to the Church of God or Church of God of Prophecy. I can't remember which, but there was a split in the church, and that's when things kind of changed a little bit. And the big meeting places now were in Cleveland, Tennessee. But there are many, many people who still go back to this beautiful facility in the mountains just across the North Carolina line. So we're going to show you some footage from that today. We're also going to go, as always, to our sponsors. And I have to say a big thank you to each and every one of them. Um, blows my mind because we have, somebody called me yesterday and asked me about a commercial. I told him the price and he said, no, what does it cost? And I told him again and he said, that's all? And I said, yeah. But I said, you have to make a commitment to do this for six months. We have so many great sponsors who have been with us since day one and thank you very, very much for that. Um, I, please suggest that you go out and spend a little money with our sponsors. It's a tough time in the small business world, but we have some great folks who've been with us a long time, and when you see their commercials, hey, if you have a business, you can do a commercial here on ETC. Stephen will come out. He will do it. He will shoot it. He will edit it. He will get it on there in just a couple of weeks, and all of a sudden, you will see people coming in your door saying, I saw you on ETC, and I didn't know you existed. Annie said that people come in and say, I didn't know you were here. Well, good. And she's been there five years, you know, and she's been in business 10. So it's a great way to share the message of your business. So call us here at ETC and talk to our advertising department. We're going to go to our sponsors. We're going to come back and we're going to go to um, the footage of Fields of the Wood. Is it, It's an interview with a lady whose family was very, very instrumental in this place. And it's also an interview with our Monday cameraman's grandfather who's very instrumental in this. And it blows my mind at the people who have old photographs. Now, one of the things I wanted to use is an old photograph, and I think it must have been possibly 55 years ago. It was taken right across from where Matt was preaching on Wednesday. And when you look at the place, it just it blows your mind because there were thousands of cars parked there. Today, we would like to get thousands of people to go back there once again and to hear great preaching, to hear great singing, and to just reflect on what it means in this season as we approach, approach Easter to be a Christian. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will get to hear a little message and a little information, a little bit more to um, hopefully entice you to check out Fields of the Wood. We're back. We're back and Angela's here and we have the doctor. We went ahead and brought the doctor in because Angela has had the same problem I had. We have not felt well for a few hours. But anyway, the doctor's here. So we've called in the ER and, and we have a nurse, we have an RM with us, and we have a doctor. So if either one of us flake out, fall over, or give it up, <laughs> y'all gonna, you gonna do CPR? On occasion. <laughs> On occasion, okay. Let's talk about, you're affiliated with what hospital? North Georgia Medical Center. Okay, so you're close by. Yes. So if we do flake out, you can get us there quick. That's right. <laughs> okay. That's right. All right. Um, one of my pet peeves, if I go to the emergency room, I'm probably sick enough I need to be seen fairly quickly. And I have waited seven hours in an emergency room waiting area. Well, by the time I got there, I was ready to knock the doctor's lights out because I was pretty ill. Now, you told me that y'all have a great track record as far as time getting people in. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, our average is, is 20 minutes. Um, of course, there's peak times, and that's oh, yeah. the problem is a lot of people decide, all decide at the same time to go to the emergency room. Uh -huh. and that's, a, that's a problem. If you, if you go to the emergency room between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., you're guaranteed you're going to have to wait longer than 20 minutes. Right. It's just because of the flow. But uh, for the most part, our, our average times are between 20 and 30 minutes when national average is four and a half hours. Right. So we, why, try, we try to do better. Okay, why is the national average four and a half to seven hours? Because it is an emergency room, so you need quick care many times. Um, but some people are abusing the emergency room because they don't have insurance. and. I'm one of those. I gave my insurance up after years and years and years, and then I went back to, to 
pick it up again, but it cost so much, it was just stressing me out. Are people using emergency rooms because they don't have insurance, and so it's flooding it? That's a big part of the problem, is wow. the fact that people are using it as a walking clinic instead of for emergencies. So, uh -huh. runny noses and colds and sore throats, things that really aren't emergencies, uh -huh. are overwhelming the system all around the country. Right. And it's, it's a national problem. And unfortunately, the hospitals only have so much uh, that they can uh, adjust to the surges, uh -huh. and they're just overwhelmed. Uh, there's a shortage of nurses right now. There's a shortage of emergency room doctors. And because of that, it's just very, very difficult for them to just adjust staffing the way other industries can do. Uh -huh. Um, it's just very difficult for these hospitals to adjust. Well, 10 years ago, if you had a daughter graduating from high school, you said, honey, go to college, you want to be a teacher, you have the summers off, you make great money, you have great benefits. Today, that's not true. Teachers are underpaid, they are understaffed, they, they no longer have pair pros, they're in there fighting with 30 kids all day long alone and have no backup. It is a really tough, tough time for teachers. Mm -hmm. So would you suggest going to nursing today? I would say definitely it's a rewarding career. Um, you know, jobs available. Jobs are available. <coughs> okay. And, um, jobs are available. Now you're an RN, so that means you have how many years of education behind you? I have. Well, I went from an LPN to an RN, so total I had three years. Okay. Three years is not bad to have a great job waiting for you. Not bad at all. Yeah. Where'd you go to school? I went to school at North Georgia College okay. in Dahlonega. Okay. And. Um, Funding. I know the HOPE scholarship is a big deal now, and a lot of people are possibly going to lose some of that. How else could you fund that? Are hospitals willing, willing to step up to the plate and possibly give scholarships to nurses who are going to school? Do they do that? Actually, we do. We have um, the auxiliary does uh, the auxiliary scholarships, mm -hmm. and there, there's help out there. There's Pell grants. There's federal grants. There's actually just student loans with low interest. It's definitely worth. I mean, I had to pay everything out of my pocket, um, you know, to go back. But it's mm -hmm. definitely worth the time and effort and the money you put in. Do you live close to the hospital? Um, I live out. Yeah, I'm about five miles mm -hmm. out Fly Branch Road. So, mm -hmm. okay, Doctor, are you from here? Uh, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh, gosh, you guys know one of them Yankee boys. Okay. Did you bring any Philly steak cheese with you when no, you came? I did not. No, no. <laughs> How did you end up in LJ, Georgia? Um, actually, I went to school in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and so I ended up south of the Mason Dixon line and decided I liked it down oh, there. Oh, yeah. And uh, actually took a job in Chatsworth, Georgia for a while as a, as a general surgeon there and really fell in love with North Georgia and the mountains. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time that it's the Appalachian mountain chain. It's the same mountain chain I grew up in, just I'm on the other end of it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And the people are the same, very similar. Uh -huh. um, you know, and uh, I just fell in love with the people and with the, with the terrain here. Let me see your hands. <laughs> Surgeon's hands. Okay, now, can you tie the little bitty knots and can you do all the stuff? Yes, ma'am, believe oh, it or wow. not. Oh, <laughs> wow, wow. What made you go into surgery? Um, I wanted to do something that uh, I could fix things in a hurry. I'm, I'm a kind of person that likes to get things done in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And I love surgery because you can change things around in a real hurry and get things fixed. Yeah. Unlike some areas of medicine where, you know, you tinker with, with dosages on medicines and right. it can take months and months to see any change mm -hmm. when someone needs their appendix out, they need it out that day. That's it. So that's, that's it. why I fell in love with surgery. Now, do you have a family? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do they? Yeah. Do y'all live close by? I live in Woodstock. Okay. Uh, my my wife's a city slicker, uh -huh. so she just, we had to move down a little closer to the city yeah. for her. Yeah. So I get my country, and she gets her city. We're halfway in between, uh -huh. and my kids are in school down in Woodstock. Uh, I've got a daughter who's 16 and a son who's 12. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what this hospital provides, because I know <clears throat> in today's market. Um, Hospitals are trying to do it all, fix it all, be it all. You know, we don't like, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but when I get in my car and want to see a doctor, I want to see a doctor close to home. I don't want to drive into Atlanta. I don't want to ever get on 285 again. So is this hospital providing some specialists and some new things that they hadn't had in the past? We are always striving for that, and, that, and that's a real problem all around the country right now because uh, uh, along with this uh, loss of... Uh, the, the, the shortage of emergency room physicians, you've got the same problem with specialists. Specialists no longer are willing to live in places like North Georgia because they can't make a living. They need enough patient volume to, to really 
to, uh, to, to pay for the malpractice insurance and, this, and such that they have to have and mm -hmm. for the years and years of, of training that they have. So it's really difficult for small communities to get these specialists to come and stay and we, we've been working really hard on that. We try to support our specialists mm -hmm. and the hospital does a lot to try to, to give them the incentives to, to, to stay in our area. So we're always working towards that and that's always been a problem though mm -hmm. as far as certain specialties it's just very difficult to get them to come to small communities. Mm -hmm. Is there a heart specialist there? There is, and, and that's always been a difficulty. And, okay. Uh, but we're always uh, working on keeping our, our heart specialists there, cardiologists, neurologists for nerve specialties, mm -hmm. uh, things like orthopedic surgery uh, that need bone surgery, those kind now of things Now, you're a are general difficult. surgeon. That means you would fix a gallbladder, an appendix, yeah. an upper GI. Do you do things like that? I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. I actually switched over to emergency medicine. Um, okay. When I was uh, first in general surgery, my, I missed my little girl's first birthday party mm -hmm. because I had an emergency appendix surgery. Right. And I decided I didn't want to spend the rest of my life with my daughter knowing me as the person that missed all of her special occasions. Right. And that's when I decided to go into emergency medicine. It's more of a scheduled thing. I work a 12-hour shift, come in, then I'm, then I'm off. So I can uh -huh. schedule my time off to spend with my family. Oh, that's so I actually idea. do emergency medicine now. I still have the training in surgery and it comes in handy in the emergency room. But mm -hmm. my specialty now is emergency medicine. I've been doing it for about 12 years. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Last time I was very disappointed in, in y'all's crew. <laughs> they had only two out of ten had seen the movie Patch Adams. Have you seen the movie uh, Patch of Adams? Of course. I love that movie. I love that movie. <laughs> I love that movie. I just love that movie. Have you seen, yes, it? seen it? I just love that movie. And I want all doctors to be like him. I want every doctor in the world to really I wish they care. would be. I do, and too. I think that's a problem with emergency medicine these days, with, with all areas of medicine, with, with doctors. <laughs> they take things so serious. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think part of the problem is, is medical schools, that's the kind of people that they kind of lean towards. Uh -huh. The guys that get the good grades, unfortunately, are not the guys that have the good sense of humor, that have the overall look at, at life and realize there's more to life than just sitting in a book and reading something. That's right. And I, I, I think that... Uh, Patch Adams is, is the physician I always strive to try to oh, be yeah. like. Now, do you know that Gazanti Clinic is still there, and they have doctors who volunteer? They have like thousands of doctors who volunteer to I go there and do work. I think that's an awesome work. story. It is. It yeah. is an incredible story. And he was yeah. was he forty when he started medical school? Think yeah. about that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's never too late to start a medical career. Now, I know that we have several colleges around that do nursing courses. You always wanted to be a nurse, mm -hmm. and it blew my or mind a because. Yeah, one or the other. Yeah, what a I'm combination. Yeah, yeah, what a combination. Yeah. I get seriously nauseated. If somebody clears their throat, I get nauseated. I mean, I just have the weakest stomach of all. When you went into nursing, were you ready for anything and everything you were going to see? Not at all. No. Not at all. No. no. Most people aren't. No, but yeah. when you when you kind of get the adrenaline rush, I mean, mm -hmm. you got, you know, with the blood and everything, you kind of get accustomed to seeing that, you know. You just can't be squeamish. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could never, in, I could even be a receptionist at a hospital. So, <laughs> and you have to have the heart for that. Now, last time I asked your other coworkers, did they take the work home with them? And they said, no, you have to leave it at the hospital. Is that a tough one? It is. It is. But you know, you've got to leave work at work because a lot of times, I mean, you you can get down. I mean, there's a lot of trauma and there's a lot of right. illness, and you. It's not that you forget about the patient. You worry about the patient and their family, but then you've got to focus on your family mm -hmm. at home. You've mm -hmm. got to, you've got to leave it behind. As it's much very as you difficult. Can. Yeah. Very difficult. Yeah. Now, did your daughter? Um, is she proud of her dad because he's a doctor? Of course. Of course. <laughs> okay. My dad, the doctor. Okay. We talked a little bit about malpractice. It is part of the world today. Um, how do you feel about that? And how do you feel about a doctor having to take his, I have a great gynecologist. I mean, I have this wonderful gynecologist and, and I just think about one day he will have to retire. And, and he and I have talked about the idea of what, how it used to be and how it is today. And she doesn't want him to retire ever. No, I don't ever. I, <laughs> I mean, mean I he's really him. getting old and she's he, like, he's he cannot like stop. And I said, you can't do this. You just can't retire me. But, but he was talking one day about how things have changed in medicine. Um, and and you are not just looking at the patient. You're looking at every avenue of what you have to do. And it's you know I can't be in a room by, with alone with a patient because there might be a malpractice. There might be a woman who says I did something I didn't do. You know there are there are things that you have to look at differently than just fixing the problem. Yeah. That's Does that? discourage people? It does, I think, and that's uh, one of the reasons why we're having such a shortage with, med um, with uh, the medical career is because uh, it's gotten to the point where uh, 
you spend more time worried about the legal aspect of something than actually caring about the person and fixing the problem. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of sad. sad. It takes away from really what the reason was that most of us go into medicine, and that's because we like to help people. Mm -hmm. and we want to help people. And, and, and it's very difficult when you have to think about legal things that you can't say things you'd like to say, mm -hmm. and you can't. You have to do a bunch of tests that you wouldn't normally do just because there's the one in a thousand chance that they could have this one thing, this rare disease, that if you miss it, you're going to get sued. Right. And so you have to, you end up making patients spend a lot more money than they have to mm -hmm. and, and go through tests that they normally wouldn't have to. And, and, and it's, it's very disheartening to some people. And it's hard to overcome that. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite shows is Mystery Diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, I, I love, love that, that show. And I love Dr. G. I'm all into this stuff, you know. <laughs> and I, it, basically, I Discovery Health is my <laughs> channel on my TV. It's either Speed when it's NASCAR time or Discovery Health. And, and I love all that stuff. How long did you go to school? Well, um, I did four years um, college, and then, of course, you do four years of medical school, and then depending after medical school what, what you go into, you can do residency anywhere from two to five to wow. even seven years. So you're surgeons. looking at at least a 15-year education. Give or take. Yeah, yes. wow. Yeah, and, and all that time, of course, you're working uh, for uh, barely minimum wage. I work 90 hours a week sometimes as a, as a resident, and so... Uh, you really end up with a lot of debt and and so it takes years and years to overcome that so you get to be in your late 40s early 50s like me before you finally get to the point where you're paying off your student loans mm -hmm. so right. I actually had two two house payments for a long time I had my house payment plus my payment for my student loans uh -huh. did your wife and, encourage you and did she work and help while you were going to medical school yes she did behind yeah. many many great doctors there is a no wonderful success it. story because a woman said <laughs> yes I want you to do this and, and you study and I'll go work at IHOP or where Ever, you mm, know yeah. so um, that's amazing definitely. yeah yeah she she I call her my domestic engineer mm -hmm. and she uh, she she was the, the really the support behind my life as far as actually getting this done I don't think I could have ever done it without her and mm -hmm. we never would have been able to have children and uh, without the, the amount of support I've gotten from her. And, and see, that, that's a whole different picture for people to see for a doctor because they always think, oh, that doctor just got filthy rich today because I went to see him and it was $135 and he spent three minutes with me and yada, 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 yada. And, and, and now, here's the real picture. The real yeah, picture yeah. is you have 15 years of, of school in you. Your wife is working two jobs to pay the bills so you can study and then there you go. Yeah, uh, the, people don't realize the overhead or how much money it's spend it, that we spend before we see a patient. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that the, the price seems pretty outrageous, and sometimes it is. I have to agree, but uh, for the right. most part, a lot of that is spent before I ever see it. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, and unfortunately, that it ends up. Uh, you know, I'm not driving a Mercedes or anything like that. I'm just driving a Ford like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Okay. How did you choose this hospital? Um, I actually, uh, when I was living in Chatsworth, did my very first ER shift here at this hospital. And I just love the people here. And um, uh, my wife and I decided she, she was a real city slicker. She couldn't handle the country. So she, I said, I'll tell What's you what, we're going to drive. Girl? I don't know. <laughs> I've been working on her for years. She, she's actually from Puerto Rico. She was, okay. she was born and raised in Puerto Rico and uh, in, in San Juan, big city of San uh -huh. Juan. So uh -huh. she just became a city slicker, and uh -huh. I don't think she ever got over that. Uh -huh. But uh, we decided we were going to, uh, I would work a 30-minute drive uh, north of wherever we lived. So we drove 30 minutes south, and that ended up being Woodstock. Uh -huh. We found a place there, and, and I said, I'm just going to I'm gonna work in you know, 30 minutes north of there. And you do have the flow of traffic. You don't have to worry about I'm traffic. against the so traffic, I, which I is I come nice. north, and it's a great drive. So, it's not yeah. a bad drive at all. I tell people I can get all the way up here to LJ before they can get through Marietta in the That's morning. Right. That's right. Woodstock. Now, what is your shift? Uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. So okay. it can be a long day. Yeah. 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 No, I'm yeah. actually, I got somebody covering me real quick so I could do this for you. <laughs> Let me ask you something because I, I have a, a dear friend who's a great surgeon at Piedmont in Atlanta. His name's Bruce Feigelson, and he is, he is just an amazing surgeon. Um, he operated, did several surgeries um, on my late husband, and, and during this time I developed a great relationship with him. He was one of those doctors who sat down on the side of the bed and talked to you. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. have time to do that? Do you? You get know, that's to do one thing I love about emergency medicine. When it's not really busy, which is about half the time, uh -huh. I like to take the extra few minutes to sit down on the side of the bed and talk to people. Uh -huh. You know, and I like to encourage them. I encourage them to pray. Encourage them to do other things that I don't get a chance to do a lot. Right. Uh, 
uh, when it's really busy and, and really get to, to know them and understand what is the real problem that's going on because a lot of times when people come to the emergency room they have the reason they came to see me but that's not really the reason why they're there right. you know what I mean yeah and um, I, that's a, one thing I really enjoy about emergency medicine is getting that you chance to talk to people Pittsburgh. You said, me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here too long <laughs> that's good. you drink do you drink sweet tea yes ma'am oh good oh good oh good okay now, uh, you can for, fool us. Yeah. You're doing good. <laughs> Thank you. For people who have questions about this local hospital, what would you suggest? If they need to get to know something about it, they've just moved to this area and they're not sure what kind of care is available, is there somebody they can contact to talk to about it? Uh, yeah, and actually there is a, a site. It's uh, NorthGeorgiaMedicalCenter.com, uh -huh. and it's all spelled out, and it kind of, you know, is somewhat a review. Uh, review of what we have uh, of course they're continuously working on the website so uh -huh. you know hopefully it'll become more informative but i mean any questions i mean i mean call we have um sherry ellis is our chief nursing officer and um jeff dunn our ceo I mean, right you know they definitely would be glad to help anybody that had questions um you know they could get a hold of me or even the er i mean mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're there all the time, 24 hours, seven days a week, so mm -hmm. we get people call with questions all the time. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is, um, what I love about this hospital is the administration is very uh, accessible. Oh, Unlike these bigger places, you may right. never see the CEO because oh, he's yeah. always in some high fancy meeting. Oh, yeah. Our, our, our administration is always there, so you okay. call pretty much any time and, and, and talk to them sometimes, or even out on the floor helping, taking care of patients. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the place. great things about our local hospitals. We have four or five local hospitals that you you might be sitting somewhere, you might be sitting at Crystal and see the CEO sitting there and he'll speak to you. You know, exactly. they're not they're not yeah. these distant things in a cave somewhere. So yeah, yeah it's, it's very different. And uh, now let me ask you about this. Do you have a family? I didn't ask you about that. I do have a family. Okay. I have, I'm married and I have three children. Um, I like to kind of space them out. I have a 22-year-old <laughs> daughter who's through college, a uh -huh. uh, 14-year-old son, and then a 5-year-old daughter. You did but space see, them I mean, out. it's great, though. Yeah. By the time my oldest started driving, and then she's through college, and then I, I've got my son coming <laughs> up, and he'll do the, it'll be the whole thing. Repeat again. Uh -huh. I won't have two kids in college at Much the same time. Much smarter than me, three driving at one time. Remember yeah. that? Yuck. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> what can you do to encourage young women who might be thinking when they finish high school, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Would you would you encourage them to go into nursing? I, I definitely would. Actually, uh, my daughter is in health care as well. Mm -hmm. um, she looked at the nursing thing. She kind of doesn't have the stomach, but she does vascular ultrasounds. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, she she's in the medical field. That's all, all she thought, you know, growing up. Because it is rewarding. You see patients, and, it, you know, in a small community, you can see you know, someone you saw in the ER who was really bad, you know, and then, you know, you see them advance and improve and mm -hmm. get better. See them in the grocery so. store and it's a good feeling. Yes, you see them coming down the aisle pushing that buggy at 80 miles an hour. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Wow. Well, well, thank you. I, I think there's a real shortage of nursing, and I think mm -hmm. that there's there's a lot of potential for them. And even if you are squeamish, um, there's a lot of things in nursing you can do where you're not involved with squeamish type things. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of right. a lot of different areas. You don't get the word squeamish. I had babies, and I could barely change diapers. Now I'm telling you, here, there's such a weak stomach, and I can handle anything. She can, and it just drives me crazy because I'm like, it's just, oh, it's all. Because one of my best you friends is a, an actual mortician, and I go and watch, and you know, he kind of he's mentoring me right now, yeah. and I, I love it. That's great. I, I'm, you know, and I'm always like, now what is that? What is that? I wanted to go back you know, to, I wanted to go to nursing school because it's something she always wanted to do. And last time we were on, there was a lady here who had been an insurance agent for years, mm -hmm. and I think Went she was forty nurse. something yeah. and became a nurse. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I also want you to mention one other thing too. You okay. said young women. Mm -hmm. young There's men, actually men. young men going into nursing, and yes. it's a big, it's a growing thing. Yes. There, there, there are only I think it's 10% uh, of the nation is is male nurses, but that's another area that young men can go into, and mm -hmm. it's just as rewarding. And I think that it's a, a career that a lot of men don't think about. Right. Mm -hmm. And and the ladies talked about the fact that there are a lot of times if you're on the floor working a patient and you can't lift a 300 pound linebacker. If John Davis came into the ER and, and he had just gotten his knee hurt in a ball game, you couldn't lift him. But if you have a guy there, it does help with that. And they talked about that, that if you're going in there and you're going to move a patient. Of course, I'm amazed at how y'all can put people on a sheet and you can, you know, two women can move them. So. Pretty Absolutely. amazing. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're fortunate to have EMS nearby because <laughs> we do call them and they never Our get port, upset. Yeah, they, you know, EMS helps us a lot, a lot they, with that. Yeah, 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 they're wonderful. Now, how many male nurses are at the hospital? Can you? Uh, you? We probably have four male okay. nurses. Okay, and it is a great career for them too. So. Yes, sure it sure is. Now, yeah. what about a um, physician's assistant? 
How do you feel about that? Is that a good career, second career to go into? I'm kind of mixed on that. I, I like the idea because it's basically, um, uh, the idea is that your training is uh, nursing plus a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. um, but I have found that it, their, their niche as far as where they fit in is really kind of difficult because right. they still have to be overseen by a physician right. and, and yet they, they have a little bit more leeway than a nurse and it's, it's kind of difficult to figure out where they fit in in most practices mm -hmm. and it's kind of difficult. So I, I'm not sure where that's going to go. I think that may be an up and coming thing though because mm -hmm. of the fact that there's so many uh, shortages of physicians, right. we may not have a choice. And, and it's funny though if you ask people when they go to the, the doctor's office, they, they get upset when they see the nurse practitioner or the physician assistant instead of the physician. See, I see a nurse practitioner <laughs> every, <laughs> every, every visit. I see the nurse practitioner. I would rather see choice. her yeah, than the doctor choice. myself. And I, yeah, yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, yeah. think, it, I, I think it's a stigma that hopefully is, is, is uh, starting away. to go away. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. She's always in there with us, you know. She takes time, and exactly. I'd rather see her yeah. any day yeah. than the doctor. Have you ever had, and, and I'm guilty, and I'm going to admit it before I tell you this, Sometimes you go to the doctor and you're worried and concerns and then you leave and you think, well, he didn't answer my questions. You know, <laughs> he didn't take time to answer my questions. I have literally taken a doctor's arm and said, sit down here a minute. We're going to talk because I'm... See, that's good. I wish know, more patients would do that. I want the answers to yeah. the questions. And I always encourage patients, when you have a lot of questions, write them down mm -hmm. because what happens is you'll get in the middle of everything and you'll forget and then later you'll go, oh, I forgot to ask him right. about my cough. Right, right. Write it down so that you, when you're in there with the doctor, you could say, hey, I wanted to ask you about this. Right. And that way you won't forget things, too. When you start to leave, do you say, is there anything else? Do you have another question? Because cause you do. Get in your car and think, oh, you know, I saw him and I forgot to ask him. We call him those that. doorknob diagnoses. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, let's talk about this. It, yeah. it happens a lot, and, and their physicians are trained to ask that. You know, is there anything else, uh -huh. or they can tell there's something else uh -huh. that we haven't gotten to yet. What is it? Right. Unfortunately, in the ER medicine, though, we're so busy sometimes we don't get a chance to do that, and uh -huh. I feel bad sometimes. I kind of leave patients hanging, but I try to give them some information to read uh -huh. and have them follow up with a primary care doctor so they can get those questions answered. Well, we are ending Heart Health Month, and we've talked heart health all, all month long. We've talked about a happy heart, and you know. Mentally, if you're mentally okay, it helps your physical okay, you know, and you just kind of work it all out together. As an ER doctor, what is it like to walk in and see a 30-year-old woman in a full-blown cardiac arrest? Is, is that something that you're really, is that something you see? Because women, we don't take mm -hmm. care of ourselves. Right. We don't take care of ourselves. We're cooking dinner, we're going to the ball game, we're taking the kid here, we've got to pick one up at cheerleading, and, and we don't take care of ourselves. And then you walk into an ER and there's a woman, 30, having a massive heart attack, and you're like, did you not see the warning signals? Two reasons, two reasons. Number one, diabetes. Mm -hmm. It's an epidemic right now. Mm -hmm. um, patients with uh, becoming obese and overweight are getting diabetes, and diabetes is the number one cause of heart disease, mm -hmm. okay? The second thing um, is the fact that people smoke so much these days. Mm -hmm. um, nicotine is the worst thing you can do for, for heart disease, mm -hmm. and by far it's the number one cause of, of, of a lot of the heart disease. Smoking is rampant right now. I'm, it, I thought it would eventually go out of fad by the time I got to be this far along in my career, mm -hmm. but it's still, it's amazing how many people smoke. If you could get people to just treat their diabetes and to, to stop smoking, I think that would help tremendously. Mm -hmm. Really do you ever would. do seminars and talk to them about preventive medicine? I do. I, a lot of times I pass out little flyers about some information, ways mm -hmm. to quit smoking. I think that's one of the most important things I can do is try to get people to quit smoking and mm -hmm. using nicotine. It's so hard to do. When you went to medical school, did you have any friends who smoked? I did. There was about two or three guys in my class, and I mm -hmm. used to think, how can you do this? Yeah. But it, it's such an addictive thing. Nicotine mm -hmm. is so addictive. As a matter of fact, I read one study that said it's more addictive than crack cocaine. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I have a and friend who quit drugs, a friend, a child, who quit drugs after 17 years of, of drugs, drug use every day. She quit drugs and has been clean four years from drugs, but nicotine? She's tried the pill. It's amazing. She's tried, she was going to try hypnosis next. I mean, she's tried it all and, and smokes 
and, and, and you know, it's like, okay, I'm smoking up a house payment, you know, and I'm smoking up another house payment, and this one smokes, mm -hmm. and this one was diagnosed it's with difficult. cancer and started smoking I again. I quit for a little while, but it, it, it is hard. It's very, very It difficult. is very addictive, yeah, and, and you're really right. Is. You know, I yeah. get to shave. But, 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 but we will say this. My mother, who smoked for 62 years, yeah. quit smoking. Wow. If my mama can quit smoking, anybody can quit smoking, <laughs> because my mama was like, she was a three-pack a day. Oh, my person. gosh. And she would make you mad over a cigarette. She was going to smoke. She didn't care if it was in the First Baptist Church. She was going to smoke. <laughs> she was going to smoke, and nobody was going to stop her from smoking. She was diagnosed with cancer and into surgery. Mm -hmm. She handed Angela her cigarettes, and I bought her a full-blown mink coat because I thought, Mama will never quit smoking. She always wanted a mink coat. And I said, you don't want to wear a mink coat that smells like a cigarette. So when she quit smoking, I bought her a mink coat so she could lay on the couch and cover up in it while she was having chemo. That's great. But it was so funny because I said, everybody says it's so addictive. And my other daughter who does smoke, 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 she quit drugs. But she has tried to quit smoking and tried to quit smoking. And, and she said, hey, you know, nicotine is a whole lot worse. That's why I think the most important thing is getting to the kids when they're really young uh -huh. and, and making them understand that it's not cool. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's part of the problem with, with Hollywood these days. Still to this day, you see all these movies, all the actors smoke yeah. right. because yeah. it's cool. Yeah. They think it's cool. First time I problem. caught her smoking, I'll never forget it. She looked at me and Don't said, take all my laundry. <laughs> she, said, she said, take a drag. It really feels good. I wanted to knock her lights out. I think I did knock her lights out she now did. that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> but it was a bad day. It was a bad day. But I couldn't imagine because let me tell you why I don't smoke. A, a doctor came to our class when I was in the eighth grade, and in a cooler, he had a man's lung who had died of, of lung cancer. And he passed it around our class. And I looked at this lung, and I'm like, Bleh! you know, and I'm like, oh, I will never smoke. I will never smoke. Well, I went wow. home that day, and my mother said, sugar, run across the street and get me a pack of cigarettes. And I said, that ain't happening. And she gave me 35 cents, and she said, Sugar, I said go across the street and get me a pack of cigarettes. I said, no, I am not buying you cigarettes. I'm not killing you. And she said, I said go get me a pack of cigarettes, and you don't understand my mother's personality. She was a martini-smoking woman. And, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? So I said, I'm not doing it. Well, she looked at my 8-year-old brother and said, Roy, go get me a pack of cigarettes. And I said, you do, and I'll whip you. You know, and he's like, oh, what? You know, so he's about to jump on his bicycle and go buy Mama a pack of cigarettes. And that was when they had vending machines at the Holiday Inn near where we lived, and you put in 25 cents and a dime, and then you pull out your cigarettes. I remember those days. Yeah. And I said, I am not doing it. I begged my mother all my life not to smoke. She was so hooked on smoking, it was unbelievable to me. Uh -huh. And and literally, she was mean if she wasn't smoking. So we're like, have a cigarette, mother. Uh -huh. Yeah, have after a, a while, have a cigarette yeah. That's, because that's she problem. was mean. But when she started smoking, it was fashionable, and it was cool, and it was the Hollywood thing, you know. And they exactly. didn't tell you what we're giving you is going to hook you for life. Uh -huh. It's like, you know, you see people go through drug withdrawal and alcohol withdrawal. You do go through nicotine withdrawal. Yeah, oh withdrawal. yeah, there's definitely withdrawal. It's just, just the it, same there, to me. It's, yeah, if I try to ever, you know, slack off or whatever, it's like, uh, I just want to kill somebody. You yeah. know, I mean, it, yeah. it is hard. It is hard. And it if really there was is. a quick fix to stop us and cure us, then, you know, that'd be great. But there's not. Your so. granny quit. If your granny can quit, <laughs> anybody can quit smoking. <laughs> Trust me. Cause there's I, hope. Yeah, I, I just... It, it blows my mind, but because I saw that man's lung, I, I just, I couldn't do that That's to my neat. I'm glad self. they were able to reach you that way. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think most of the kids in my class, but I will say, of a mother of three, all three of mine smoke. Hmm. Is that, did I fail miserably? <laughs> I sure did. I sure did, and I'm a witch about smoking. I'm a witch about it. I'm like, you know, we don't smoke around her. Oh, she don't just smoke around me. It, but uh, they inherited a whole lot less than they think they're going to get because they smoke. I mean, I'm just mean about it because I love them and I care about them. And they choose to smoke, and I'm like, you're killing yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and have a party and spend your money, and I'll just enjoy my your inheritance because y'all ain't going to be here if you don't quit smoking. What is it like when you see somebody who's trying and quit? You know, they, they try and they fail. They try and they fail. What do you recommend? Cold turkey, pills, patches? What do you recommend? The thing that I see working the best is a new medicine out there called Chanix. Right. And my I daughter really have tried seen some that. great results with mm -hmm. that. As a matter of fact, my dad, who was smoking since he was 15 years old, quit at the age of 68. Wow. And it was Chanix that uh -huh. finally did it. And I had tried everything else with him. 
<laughs> and I finally, you know, I, I, bugged, I bugged him just like you, you bug your children <laughs> and could not get him to quit. And it, the Chanix worked for him. Wow. And I've seen it work for people that nothing else had pill? worked. It's uh -huh. a pill that you take, uh -huh. yeah. It what takes it away do? the craving. Just basically takes away those withdrawal symptoms that you described. Mm -hmm. And it seems but to work But you know, a lot of well. it is um, your hands. Exactly. Something to do with your hands. You know, and it's a... Um, it's, uh, and that's why thing, one of the things a, they recommend is that you come up with another habit to take that place. So that's when you feel whenever, like you're whenever grab I try to work with, I find food going in instead yeah. of a cigarette. You know, and, and, and that's not good either. Chew, chewing gum is, is one of the things they recommend. Um, the nicotine uh, gums seem to help too because it, you're kind of doing, you're getting a little bit of the nicotine, but you're also doing that same. You're ch replacing that habit with a different habit right. that's a little safer. Mm -hmm. So well, it's, it's not easy, though. It's it really not, isn't. And no. there's not a really, there's not a 100% cure for everyone that works, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I wish there was. Now, for a smoker who possibly smoked 20 years and quits, does that help their life expectancy? Well, what they say is over a 10-year period, you eventually get your risk back to where it was before you smoke. But okay. it takes a good 10 years. Okay. Because really what smoking does is it kills the escalator system in your lungs. You have an escalator system that whenever you breathe in dirt and dust and everything, it escalates back out and you swallow it. And it's constantly keeping your lungs clean. Well, that lining dies when you smoke. Wow. And so that's why coffers often smoke a lot. I mean, often cough a lot because they're coughing up all that stuff that normally their escalator system would get rid of. Uh -huh. And it takes that escalator system a good six months to really repair itself and start working mm -hmm. again. And then they start feeling better over several years. Wow. But it, it takes a while. It's not a quick fix, mm -hmm. you know, you're better in a month. Mm -hmm. I'd heard it was like seven years. but Yeah, you know, it's seven, seven to ten years mm -hmm. is the average that it takes mm -hmm. before your, your risk is back to where it was. Well, maybe we've encouraged one person to quit I hope so. Today. You know, I, hope so. I mean, it, it is one of those things, um, It and, and we didn't even talk about this, the tobacco, what do you call that stuff, they dip? Yeah, the chew and the... My grandmother the, and all her snuff. siblings ended up with pancreatic cancer. They all have one common denominator, snuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Every single one of them ended up with pancreatic cancer. Not only to mention the fact that nicotine is one of the strongest substances known to man to squeeze arteries. People don't realize that. Really? It squeezes your arteries very hard, so that's why nicotine causes the heart damage because your arteries in your heart are small, but it also causes kidney damage, so you end up with high blood pressure. As a matter of fact, when you smoke, it increases your, your blood pressure 30 points every time you smoke. Wow. It causes strokes because of the small arteries in your, in your brain, and it also causes a lot of uh, arthritis in your discs in your back. Um, I tell people all the time, I see patients with bad discs in their back all the time. All of them are smokers. Wow. I have very rarely ever seen a patient with bad discs in their back that wasn't a smoker. Or really? a chewer. Wow. Yeah, that chewed tobacco. Yeah, it's the nicotine. Wow. It, it, you're smothering your, your, your discs in your back every time you smoke. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you were here today. I'm glad my smoking child was here today. So, thank you very much. Y'all don't bill, judge me, okay? You're going to send me a bill $15 for this session. <laughs> we hope this session touched somebody who is trying to quit smoking. And I say, God, I'm so proud of my mama for quitting because yeah, she died of wonderful. cancer. But she quit in the last two years of her life. She didn't smoke, and I was so proud of her. I honestly thought she was lying and cheating on me, and I didn't think she'd really quit, but she did. So. We used to joke, though, because I, I tried to quit at the same time with her because I took her to all her chemos because mama was dealing with my stepdad and his cancer at the same time. So I'd take my grandmother to the doctor all the time and we'd pull up to a gas station and somebody would have a cigarette and she's like, she was a little bitty tiny thing, you know, 100 pounds if she's wet. And she's like, okay, you hold them down and I'll take their cigarette from them. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. And I was like, you know, but, but it was easier for me then because I had I had a true partner in crime as far as we were trying to quit together. Yeah, that helped. And she was doing yeah. really good. And taking her to chemo, I think, helped me. Yeah. But then once she was gone, yeah. my craving was still there. And it was always there. Mm -hmm. But I fought it easier with her. Yeah. And, you know, dealing with all that it she went through. And then you have a partner when she help. was gone, I, I immediately, you know, yeah. distress and everything, I just I picked it back up. That's the other thing I told people. Once you quit smoking, don't even light one up for somebody else after oh, no. that because that's yeah. all it'll I take. I couldn't even stand to be around anybody that had one because I, I wanted to beat them down and take it from them, you know, and, and it's pitiful. It. It's pitiful. It, you know. Yeah, it's, it's I, 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 but it's funny because I don't smoke because if I did, I would probably be in a, a smoke addict and, I, and I, the drinking thing. Because whatever you do, do you do well. I would do well. I mean, I know I would be a good smoker and a good drinker, so I chose not to do any of that because I think it, and it also has something to do with your personality. 
and and folks who say I can't quit. Um, Mama said I don't want to quit, and mm -hmm. I think that was the difference. Yeah. And yeah. then when Mama wanted to quit, I was she just put them down. You know, she just put them down. Mm -hmm. and, and Howard Hamby, my my little buddy, quit yeah. after 35 years. He went to trade in a car, and it was a gray car. And the guy got in it, and he looked at it, and he said, "Sir, why do you have a gray car with brown interior? The interior was brown because of the chain <laughs> smoking." Yeah. And Howard said, "It is not a." brown interior can't you see it's pewter and the man said no it's not pewter it's brown and they rubbed the top of his headliner and it just came yeah. off and he said oh lord and that day he took the pack out of his pocket never smoked again i couldn't believe that he never smoked but he again. was one lit one off the other oh yeah and his fingers had the brown tips you know where he always and he smoked wow. them down at the very end wow. but but trading a car when the man said why do you have a gray car with a brown interior and he's like oh it's not brown yeah, just like your lungs were. So, thank you very much for being here today. I You're hope welcome. you I, I hope you help somebody encourage somebody to quit. Encourage somebody to quit. Encourage somebody to quit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This was all planned, y'all. She's been throwing up all morning, so we bring in the doctor to get her to quit smoking. <laughs> we are going to take a break as soon as I do these two birthdays, and we're going to go to Fields of the Wood. It's an interview that we did a while back, and uh, with a lady whose family was very instrumental in in building and providing a wonderful place for Christians to go and meditate and to just sit and reflect on God's done some great things. Mm -hmm. He's done some great things. Mm -hmm. We have a birthday, Sarah Miller, 30 years old, from Dad, for my lovely daughter. Happy birthday to Sarah and to Matthew Bagwell. Happy, happy birthday to you on your 26th birthday. Right now, we are going to go up to a beautiful place. I've encouraged you to go and visit. You can get online and get the information and get directions. Very easy to find. Go through Turtletown, Tennessee, head out the road, and there you go, cross the North Carolina line, and you are there. We're going to take you now to Fields of the Wood and uh, sit back and enjoy a little bit of information on this great facility. Have you ever been there? I've never been there for real either. Well, we've come inside. Y'all knew we'd find food. We actually found an ice cream or two. We are once again in Fields of the Woods. This is an amazing story, and it got better when you walked in the door. Miss Vivian, tell me a little bit about your history and your relationship. Where's that book? Where's that? Okay, let's get this book, number one. You walked in with some treasures. This is Fields of the Wood, and this is from 1960. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, whose book was this? It was my father's. Okay, is your dad George? Reed. George Reed, who passed away in 1960. Okay, now in this book, there is a photo of... Tell me a little bit about this house. Well, uh, Shirley and my grandma, her great-grandmother and my grandma lived in that house. And I can remember going there and they had a wooden walkway. And Mom said that uh, she lived there until she was a little girl, you know. And uh, Grandpa had a store across the road from that, and it was a post office, General Merchandise. Mm -hmm. And uh, they finally, they sold it to the Church of God. Okay, the Church of God bought this in what year? Well, in that it says 1941. Okay. And is that house still here today? Well, the chimney's there and the old living room is okay. there. Where could but we find that if people wanted to take a trip and find that? You go back down to Lowfields Woods and uh, make a right and go about a mile. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's about a fourth of a mile to it. Mm -hmm. And then Cheer Scoot House and the Holy Ghost Marker's about a mile. Right. Okay, now you brought in a photograph that has some amazing shots. We're going to talk about... M.D. Kilpatrick is sitting in the buggy. A.G. Tomlinson, now we talked about him earlier. He is holding the Bible. J.B. Mitchell is standing, and the boys on the left. Can we talk about that? Luther Bryant, who is that? Okay, what about Homer Tomlinson? He was Milton's, A.J.'s uh, brother. Okay, and um, let's see. The girls are Dolly Anderson. Do we know them? Do you think there are any of their descendants still around I here? I don't know. There's uh, some Thomasons in there. Uh -huh. And this was taken in 1901. 
I love the way they dressed. Wouldn't you hate to have to iron those clothes? Oh my goodness gracious sakes alive. Now, you brought me some photographs too, of some history of your family. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Your dad was one of the miners. Yes. This is a treasure. Now tell me a little bit about what year do you think this picture was taken? It's probably in the late 30s or the early 40s. My daddy got blown up in the mines in the 30s and he went back to work in 41. Okay. And uh, he was totally stable and mom kept boarders during the TBA to take care of us uh -huh. and feed us. Now, how old was your dad when this happened? Uh, gosh, I don't know. He's probably uh, 1960. He was 60 something. And when we look at the photograph, your dad is, he has a pipe, and yeah. that's, you can yeah. identify him, can't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Boy, I wonder how many of these folks are still around. Not many of them. Probably not many. That's amazing. Okay, now, this is something, I love this. This is, tell me a little bit about this lady. She was born in 1851? 1856 and died in 1956. And okay. She taught Santa School at Reach Chapel. Uh -huh. They would walk three miles and ford the river, Hiawassee River, in a boat and walk three miles to reach chapel and I've got a bunch of her uh, little Sanskrit cards. That's funny because we were talking about today, people find an excuse not to go yeah. to church. And she walked three miles three and then miles. got in a boat to make yeah. it to church. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Now is this her birthday? It's okay, 100th birthday. Mrs. Martha Reed observes her 100th birthday yesterday. How long has she been gone? 1956. 1956. Wow. So she's been gone almost as long as I am old. That is amazing. That is so amazing. Who is the lady in the photo with That's her? That's her daughter. Okay. And she didn't have electricity and she would tell about, uh, she told us about the Indians coming and staying all night with them and uh, said they were friendly and they had the Indian baskets. Uh -huh. and, uh, what well, kind of Indians were in this area? Well, they came uh, down to Hanging Dog to uh, get the material for baskets. Uh -huh. Now, you have two Pardon. wonderful photographs. This is an old postcard. Can we talk a little bit about these two gentlemen? Well, one is uh, A.J. Thompson was the first uh, general overseer, and then uh, Mill. Okay. And what year do we think this was? Um, the general overseers of the Church of God of Prophecy, let's see if it tells us a year. 1943. Uh, he died in 1943. So that is, that is amazing. Now, you also brought me a picture. I love this building. Tell me a little bit about this because I've never seen this. Or well, I bet I have and I didn't know yeah, it. Yeah, the land cables. Uh huh. Uh, that, that is one of the land cables married MD's daughter, I suppose. Uh huh. I'm not sure. Uh huh. But anyway. Uh, I met uh, the daughters. Now, where is this house today? That is at that town. Uh, when you're driving into that town, you can see the big house, I suppose, up on the hill. Uh, it's the old funeral home, the old yeah. Waters funeral home, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Do you know, are there any of the uh, of the Sperling descendants still living in the area, or the Bryants? There's a lot of Sperlings. Yeah. That still live in the yeah. area? Mm -hmm. yeah. How about the Bryants? I don't know about that. That's okay, now this is your daddy. Let's show this photograph. This is him younger, and this is him toward the end of his life. World War I, 22 years old. That These are such treasures. I'm so glad you came to be with us today. And this these are amazing. Brother. Okay, and this is your brother? He died at 62. Okay. Now, were y'all members of this church? Yes. Yes, okay. I still am. You're still a member of this church. Now, how many people do you think, we were talking about this earlier, and Ed couldn't come up with a number, and I certainly couldn't. How many people do you think have actually worshipped here and possibly been saved here? I don't know. I was nine year old when I got saved. Here? In the sanctuary. Okay. We had church in the sanctuary. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, I was telling someone today, I said, this lady, she would let me walk to church with her. And we'd walk a mile and a half down where we live and uh, my mom didn't believe in the church at the time and uh, so I would come with her 
Wow. And we come to the egg rolling Easter egg hunt and everything. And anyway, when I got saved, she just liked and liked and liked. Wow. So that's the way she rejoiced. Wow. <laughs> Now, did your mom ever become a member of the church? Mom, mom was one of the first four members. Wow. She thought she had died if she didn't join. Oh, that's amazing. That's what she said. That is amazing. And she played the piano for, Clara, how many years? 40 something or 50 something years? Yeah. Now, this is an old spelling book. That's my grandpa Reed's Union Spelling Book. Oh, wow. What a treasure. And what year do you think that book? There's no feeling. You're in the Union War. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. To have these treasures. Now, what else did you bring me? I want to see this one. Okay, this is the Church in the Wilderness First Assembly Memorial Service. I wonder how many of these people are still around. How far back does that picture date? Do you know? Let's see. We don't have a date. Oh, yes, we do. 1973. So there could possibly be some of these yep. people still around. Yeah. Now, what house is this in front of? First Assembly yep. Memorial Service. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, what's it? Oh, I love this picture. This is her grandma. This Mary's is Shirley mother. Singleton's grandmother? That's oh. Mary's How neat. Mom. How neat is that? And what year do you think this is? That is. Do you have a picture like this? No. no I've never seen that before. This is Shirley's mom. Is her grandmother's? This one is that right, yes. Shirley? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is so neat. Now the rest of them brothers and sisters. Yeah. And, and so you and Shirley are related first by cousins. first cousins. Okay. Isn't that? Well, something? she's second cousin to me. Okay. Mary, Mary and me. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. And this is. Uh, yes. How neat is that? And this has her social security card, her county resident fishing license. I love that. <laughs> At 93 years old, that is too, too cool. She was the sweetest woman. Wow. Now, Mary's a lot like her. Is that right? She's sweet. awful sweet. Yeah, she is, I guess. Awful, awful yeah. sweet. This is really sweet. Okay. <laughs> 94 birthday. Yeah. Wow. What treasures. Goodness. That is so, so neat. This is so Okay, this is Mary's grandma That's too? My mom. Okay. So here's Mary's grandmother and here's your mom. And the rest of them family members? Yeah. Lord, wouldn't you hate to dress like that today, Shirley? Hate it. My goodness gracious. That is amazing. That is amazing. I just love this. That is too cool. What else you got? Well, here? What is that? This is an old one. Okay, this is uh, George Quinn and his aunt Nancy Myra Roberts Reed around 1900 or 1905. George's mother died when he was nine days old, and Myra took him in to raise. George was born around 1880, and Myra was born June 16, 1834. Died September 14, 1916. This is the coolest looking house, and I love the fact that it's on that rock foundation. Do you think this house still exists? No. That is yeah, so I mean, I mean, neat. That is absolutely the coolest thing. Do you, uh, know and remember or have been told any more about the Shearer Schoolhouse. I know it doesn't exist there anymore and I've heard that it was burned down because they worshiped there. No, this is the story. Okay, tell us. Whenever mom was a little girl, they would go to camp for to the homeless church. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Ghost began to fall, there was about a hundred people that the Holy Ghost. So they quit going. She said, they'd go in the wagon. And she'd say, she said, Paul, why don't we go to church anymore? And she said, it's too dangerous. Or he said, it's too dangerous. They got to throwing yellow jackets in on them and hornet's nest in on them. Just all kinds of stuff to persecute them. Well, uh, my aunt cooked for these men, and then uh, some of my folks gave them the land and the logs to build the church. Mm -hmm. 
So they had to tear that church down to burn it. And they did. Mm -hmm. well, they, my did daddy, they didn't want to burn a church. They so couldn't they burn it standing. Uh -huh. They had to tear it down. They tore it down so they could burn the logs and say they didn't burn a church down, they burned yeah. the logs. Yeah. So anyway, Amazing story. Uh, uh, my grandma Kilpatrick went over there and uh, she she said them women would roll, they had white wrists on, and they'd just roll and shout, and they call them hoes over there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she said, I said, Grandma, didn't they get dirty? She said, no, I don't think so. Well, they <laughs> turned her out of Liberty Baptist Church for going. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then she went back and joined back. <laughs> now, anyway, how many years have you been a member of the church? Um, <coughs> 19 years. <coughs> now, the... The ground, uh, the holy ground where the spirit fell, was there a church on that ground at the time? Now, where are you talking about? Just past your school on the left, just the, under your feet. That was supposed to be where the church was. Okay, that's and what I thought. And my daddy was going to Grandma Reed's, that lived over in the Pleasant Hill area, and he walked through the trail, and he came through there, and this man was up there praying. And Daddy listened to him, and he was praying for the Lord to forgive him for helping burn the church. Oh, wow. And all of those men that helped burn it died very violently. Isn't that something? It's Isn't amazing. that something? It yeah. Is yeah. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Now, how many members in this area do you know who still go to the church who have memories like you have? Are there many of the older folks left? I don't know. Um, I didn't I ask really your age. Know. Didn't ask your age, but are there are there? I'm three quarters. Okay. Okay. All right. Are there members <laughs> older than you that are still around? Um, Susie. Susie Ledford. Susie Ledford. Okay. Uh, we were friends. And I don't know, Clara. Do you know Howard? It is, but he don't know as much as I do, does he? Dad? Now, is this part of a treasure for you to be back here today and see how beautiful it is because the grounds are well kept? It's beautiful. Yeah, we did walk up here. We walked uh -huh. to go up to the airport and walk a mile uh -huh. up to the airport uh -huh. last year. Did. Does it make you sad that people don't come here like they used yeah. to? Yeah. Now, tell see, me the most people you've ever seen here at one time. Oh, my goodness. Thousands? Thousands. Thousands. Mm -hmm. We used to walk, when I was a child, we'd walk the mountain instead of when they got the road now, but we'd walk to the cross with the Bahama band. Mm -hmm. And I'd march and go right along with them, and them just sweating and carrying them big tubas and all of that. And, you know, we grew up with the, all of the dignitaries, and they would come in here and put on plays for us, and uh -huh. run revivals, and we had tent revivals, and, and uh, just every, every Now, do you come here now for Easter sunrise service? Uh, I have. I didn't get to come last year. I came two years. Mm -hmm. but, but we used to get up at 3.30 in the morning and walk. Come wow. Here. Now, how far do you live from here right now? About five miles. About five miles. Well, I hope that we can bring awareness to this area. Yeah. I hope we can bring people back here. I would love to see this place full. Yeah. I would love to see people making a pilgrimage here to come here with the purpose to pray and to bring on, just like you did in the years past, the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't it be a wonderful Wouldn't area for a for a revival to break out again. Mm -hmm. They used to come in on open trucks shouting and, and speaking in tongues as they came in. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, Tell me too, we were talking earlier about the uh, the tomb, the remake of the tomb and the trees that are planted there. Uh, it seems like I remember someone bringing those over from yeah, Lebanon. This couple, or, this couple that was, I showed you, that was millionaires and they donated the trees from the Holy Land. They come from Israel. A lot of Israel. didn't live. Yeah, they didn't live. The trees were. Oh, well, the trees are gone now. They didn't live. No. But because I, I of remember. Because the climate, probably the different climate. Yeah, My I was daddy here. used to work the garden. He oh, really? Your son and my tree got loaded. The yeah, mountain. they were beautiful trees. I remember shortly yeah. after yeah. they were planted, I was yeah. here. Now, the first time I came here, the pool wasn't taken care of, and it had green stagnant water in it. And I was so happy today when we came. It looks wonderful. It looks like there's a lot of work being done around here now. Maybe there will, maybe there'll be a revitalization, 
and people will once again come, and maybe the money will come back. You know, well, they can take used care of to it. the different states had, I can remember when they had the assembly, say Georgia would take care of the pool or whoever mm -hmm. did, mm -hmm. and they would have a service at that. Mm -hmm. Then there'd be people all up the mountain and at the Bible. Each state took care of its thing. Mm -hmm. And then they had a program was a church prophecies uh, market association. And they paid five, each member paid five dollars. Well that went into the upkeep. Well now they don't that, have that. I, I hope we've encouraged you to take Very a trip. Very interesting. Take a trip across the Tennessee line at North Carolina, about two miles, and there's fields of the wood. It is an absolutely beautiful place for a picnic, for an inspirational moment, for an inspirational afternoon. It is absolutely beautiful. So there you go. And as you approach spring, nowhere any prettier. I have a very special birthday. She's 81. She certainly doesn't look it. Miss Nell Pittman, happy, happy birthday to you. She is 81 on February the 25th. Now we have one announcement I want to make sure we get in. You got the bucket? Um, tomorrow there's going to be a big benefit for Daryl and Laura Sanford at the North Georgia Christian Academy in LJ. And I want to remind y'all, please be involved in that, whether it be in the yard sale, the gospel singing, uh, cakewalk, whatever you can do to help this family. For more information, call 706-635-5479. And this Sunday, if you know and love Marcel Ledbetter, we know and love Marcel Ledbetter. We uh, hope you will be with us in coming Georgia to celebrate her 80th birthday. And this is a picture of she's 80. She walks every single day. She takes care of her yard. More than that, she takes care of her church family by cooking, 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 cooking. She an, ama an amazing, sweet, sweet lady who does so much for others. And uh, we want to say happy, happy birthday to her. She is. Um, she's kind of like the last of all the good ones for us and and it's very special she lady. is a very very special lady who has done for others all her life she's always working at the cemetery at church she's always doing for others so there you go but now she's one that had lung cancer and never she smoked. did she did never she absolutely smoked. did of course her husband chain smoked so there you go <coughs> okay <clears throat> we're going to go to some music that we, uh, I talked about it this week. You've seen a little bit of it. You're going to see a little bit more. We've been featuring children this week. And we started out the week with the Barnett family from Forsyth County. And you haven't gotten to see Jessie sing yet. Jessie is nine years old. She stands up and sings with her family every Saturday night, lots of Friday nights and lots of Sundays. There are a lot of things, uh-huh, there are a lot of things that kids could do besides going to church and singing with their family. This family does it right. Mom and Dad got married at 14 and 17. Think about that. Odds were against them, but they have raised an amazing family by staying in church. And we're going to go to some music by the Barnetts now, and I hope this is the song that features Miss Jessie on it. She is so, so cute. She has a great, great positive, <coughs> excuse me, positive smile, positive attitude, and they just love sharing their message through song. So these are ministers of music, the Barnett family. If you'd like to get in touch with them, they are from Forsyth County. And they will come to your church and sing. So there you go. That little girl you had on the other day was amazing. She, she was amazing. She, no, she did Leanne Rhymes. Leanne Rhymes, blue. And That's she right. yeah, and she will win she Idol. I bet good. you. I bet you. Right now we are gonna go to the Barnett family at uh, Corinth Baptist Church, a wonderful tiny church over in Pickens County.
featuring kids this week, and, and it is a privilege to show kids doing something really positive. And we have had nothing but positive kids on this week, and I loved it. Now, there's going to be something positive happening tonight in Fannin County. The Fannin County Lady Rebels will be playing the Love It Lady Lions, and Fannin, you got to win this one. I guarantee you, David White will be sitting front row center there. Um, Fannin County High School Gymnasium at 7 p.m. Please come support the Fannin County Lady Rebels. They are first place in sub region tournaments and second place in the region, so there you go. Go out and support those kids. And also tomorrow at 1.30, we will be at Harbor Ministries. Um, the the event starts tonight at, uh, let me see if I can tell you what time it starts at. Uh, da, 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 da. Starts tonight at 6 o'clock, I believe. Um, for more information, call Denise Caldwell, 706-633-3769. There's an oh, event tonight. Nice. That's right. Event tonight, event in the morning, and I will be at the event at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon. I've been thinking, I, I need to, I'm supposed to give a little testimony. The testimony is, I made it through this year. I made it through last year. I made it through the roughest year of my life, but I made it. I made yep. it. So um, the message is, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't think you hit a brick wall, and don't think you got to just stop what you're doing, because the devil comes against you. Mm -hmm. And when the devil comes against you, you just kick him on out, and you just keep on doing what That's you're doing. Right. It has been an amazing year of recovery of, um, we hope, we hope that this year we will see recovery and we will see people revitalized and we will see them if you lost a job start a new job if you got downsized think of something else you can do you know there are so many things you can do to lift yourself up and um i i just encourage you stay pumped up stay positive do not do not lose sight of the big picture. And the big picture is you can make it through anything. So tomorrow, please join uh, Denise Caldwell and her friends for Grace and Him Women's Ministry. It is non-denominational. They don't care where you go to church. Come and join them. Yep. Grace and Him Ministry seeks to help women realize their full potential in Jesus Christ. Grace for Him retreats. And um, she does this quite often. And it is a great time to share. There will be... Um, Salvation, strength, forgiveness, compassion, eternal life. Um, it is all about grace. And you'll get to hear some music by Victory Song. And you'll get to hear some music by Denise, who could be singing soundtracks for Disney. Trust me, the girl could be singing soundtracks for Disney. It will be held at Harbor Ministries tonight and tomorrow, starting at, I believe, at 6 p.m. tonight. And it's $15. That includes your meal. So there you go. We're going to go now back to the Barnett family. We want to feature them a little bit more because these people decide to go around. And you know the thing I loved about them? Everybody says, you know, it's, it's a free singing, but we take a love offering. Okay, in today's world, a lot of people can't even afford the love offering, so it's really, really hard. The one thing I noticed about Corinth Baptist Church, there wasn't no money collected nowhere for nobody. These people did this free period. I mean, they just, yeah. they did it to minister through music, and I was very impressed with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much to the Barnett family. More than that, thank you to Corinth Baptist Church. When you open your doors to cameras, that means that whatever we saw, we were allowed to film and share with you. There was some shouting, there was some praying, there was a little preaching. It was a great, great Saturday night. I encourage you to find a church to visit this weekend, possibly that you haven't visited before, and I'll tell you, there's a really good one. It's called New Prospect up on Hard Scrabble. If you were touched by my friend Bill Pittman, go by and hear that young man preach. He is, he is a great, great talent um, in doing the Lord's best work. I say Bill Pittman is the Lord's best work. We're going to go back now to the Barnett family, and then when we come back, it'll be time so to do something we, we never do. We've got to do a birthday drawing. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'll be going somewhere super fun this weekend. I'm so excited. Okay, Sarah Miller, 30 years old, from dad to my lovely yes. daughter, and there you go. You there is our her. winner. Yay. There you go. Okay, here we go, the Barnett family.
time set now. Friday night, 6.30, Harbor Ministries. Saturday morning, 9.30, Harbor Ministries. Saturday lunch, noon. And guess what? $15 includes all meals. Mm -hmm. So that is too cool. That is too cool. Come and join us Friday night tonight, 6.30, Saturday, 9.30 a.m. and noon tomorrow. We'll be there for the noon tomorrow event. We encourage you to come and, and to to get to know the wonderful ladies at Harbor Ministries. And good day, Miss Joyce. Good day, Miss Joyce, and thank you very much for loving me. And we talked today about loving each other. You you can love each other without doing the big thing. You know, Richard Burton did the big thing for Elizabeth Taylor. They didn't even make it. You know, they didn't even make it. So sometimes the little things mean more to you than anything. From uh, I turned around the other day and my little sweetheart was pushing a vacuum cleaner and yeah. I never said a word other than I need to vacuum and yeah. I turned around and it was being done for me. Yeah, it, it is little things mean it so is. much to touch you. Mm -hmm. And in today's world, um, if you do something little for somebody else, it'll come back to you 10,000 times. Mm -hmm. One of the things I really enjoy is the comments and the calls you give me and the kind words. Thank you very, very much for all of that. It's time to do something we don't do. We never say goodbye. From North Georgia now today, I'm Sherry. I am Papa Lou. Elizabeth Banks. That's Angela Burgess. Good Lord Almighty. This girl is confusing me so bad. Her name's Angela and she's going <laughs> to quit smoking, y'all. She's going to quit smoking. That's what I want for Christmas. Yay! And I'm going to super cross this weekend, y'all. Yeah. From Yay. North Georgia now today, we won't say goodbye, but we will say we will see you later. Please check out Facebook because we are going to be putting Matt's message on there. So many people called. So many people were touched by the message. And check out Fields in the Wood, a great place to spend your weekend. I look forward to seeing you again on Monday. Only on ETC3. Don't you touch that dial. Here comes my buddy Rich Scott with Bargains Galore. Sleepy little smile with her head on my chest. That's the you that I like best. Give me that girl. Give me that girl loving up on me. Old t-shirt and a pair of jeans. That's the you I want to see. Give me that girl. Give me the girl that Without a trace of makeup on, barefoot in the kitchen, singing her face.